G'day, today we're looking at an Adaptronic ECU from the early 2000s or so. This particular one is a, I don't know if you can quite see that, but it's an E420C and installed in a uh, Toyota Celica with a 3 with a 3S GTE engine. These ECUs were pretty classic from the time, um, one of the most affordable, comprehensive ECUs uh, by Andy Wyatt, who's now of, uh, with Haltech. And it was a really classic time, so we had Dyno Dynamic Dynos with their DOS interface, Windows XP or 7, uh, direct serial connections and so forth. Uh, so in 2025, let's see if we can get it hooked up uh, communicating with the ECU and be able to change some of the parameters. So the job for today is just to hook it up, get the comms going, and then change the uh, injector table or the injection table for the whole fueling map uh, to suit new injectors. This particular engine came with the 430cc injectors from factory and that's what this ECU was set up with. These days, the injectors that are easiest to find are the 540ccs, which is what, um, what we have in the car now. And so we need to adjust the uh, injection tables. Typically, these ECUs were uh, calibrated with just the fuel table directly in milliseconds, uh, rather than a more advanced approach of having injector size, uh, the engine capacity, so on and so forth, and a VE table. So first job, we've got to hook it up and power it. I've got the uh, diagram here, and we can see it's pretty straightforward. There's only power and ground. So just an ignition power and ground, no uh, permanent and switched uh, battery voltage lines. So we have four connectors, these two connectors here, which are the big pins and then these two here which have the inputs and outputs uh, for most of the signals. So all the heavy current stuff's on here on these large pins with the, uh, I think they're injectors, yeah, injectors and other high current loads. So we have the diagram. Let's have a look at the ECU. There's two connectors here. So it's the eight pin connector, which is this one, but it's not labeled on here. And if you know these types of connectors, you'll know which one's pin one. Um, but if you need to confirm, here's an easy way to do it. Looking at the ECU, we can see that pin 1 is the power. Pin 2, 3 and 4. So these three together are common to the chassis ground. And on the other side, we have the injector outputs. So having a look over here, it's a ground switch. So we've got power source to the injectors and then the ECU switches the ground side of the injector. So if we get this connector opposite and put power over here instead of here, it probably isn't going to be too much damage done. Uh, nevertheless, we don't want to try that. So what's the easiest way we can confirm this? We could pull it apart, um, but I'd rather not do that. So we know that these three pins are common, so they should buzz out continuity between the three. Let's have a look. So we've got the meter here set to continuity. You can see that by the symbol up here. Let's test it. Pretty weak buzzer on this thing. It does work. So we know that pin one is power. So pin one could either be here or here. I'm thinking it's most likely going to be here. Pin 2, 3 and 4 are ground, so that's 2, 3 and 4, so let's pick 2 and we've got continuity to those other two and no continuity across the rest. If we went this way, so that's pin 1, 2, 3 and 4, there's no continuity there at all. So that's pin 1, 2, 3 and 4, we have continuity, so that's pin 1 and that's our ignition power. I've marked it here on the case so we don't get mixed up for next time. Okay, so here's uh, just a loom that I have for my switch box over here. Yellow is ignition, black is ground. So to get pin one hooked up, ground hooked up. 
doesn't matter which pin you choose here, two, three, or four. I've chosen two just to give a bit of, uh, chosen pin three just to give a bit of space. That's all we need for this ECU because the uh, comms come through this RS232 port here. Let's get that hooked up for power. And we'll also get a serial cable hooked up. So my particular laptop has a, a hardware serial port, otherwise you'd have to use a USB to RS-232 serial adapter. So I'll just hook that up in here. And we're ready to give the software a go. The software we use to connect to the Adaptronic E420C ECU is the WARI software, so W-A-R-I which stands for Windows Adaptronic Remote Interrogator. I love those um, terminologies from the era. So we've got that hooked up, uh, the RS-232 serial cable to COM1. And it just sits here and waits for the ECU to appear on the serial bus. So get this powered up. Lights, camera, action. And we see LEDs come on on the front, a couple of things blinking, so that's a good sign. And over on the WARI software, we have the ECU uh, detected and loading all of the tune from, or the calibration from the ECU into the software. Here it is. Uh, what have we got here? A warning about the firmware. So this is probably an early ECU uh, not on the latest firmware, but we won't worry about that. There's no explicit warnings about having to upgrade. Sometimes that happens. Uh, it won't let you write anything to the ECU uh, until you upgrade to the latest firmware. And that's generally to prevent any conflicts that might happen uh, writing into the wrong section of memory and so forth. So I'll say okay to that. Let's get this full screen. And it loads into the tuning page, which is handy. And we can see this looks like it's got just a bass tune on here. So looking at the 3D map, we've got the load going up here to 280, I think it's actually 300 on the table, 300 kPa, uh, manifold absolute pressure. And we've got the RPM range across here. So zero RPM, uh, that's probably 1000, 2000, 3000, 4000, so forth up to eight and we can see that the units of the tables in milliseconds. So this is direct injector time uh, for, the, um, for the fuel injectors. So we know that it's roughly 20% uh, larger flow on these injectors. So to give us a starting point, all we need to do is make this uh, injector table uh, lower by 20%. So should be able just to select everything here getting selected the shortcut for percentage adjustment let's have a look let's see here so ab subtract percentage control p we'll go control p for this menu hopefully without oh, we can just choose select all Control P minus 20%. And a good check is the first cell here is 1. And that to focus is 1. So if this has worked, then that should be 0.8. Let's confirm that. And we have 0.8. So that's worked. And you can see that it's writing to the ECU. So it's essentially in real time with a little bit of lag for that much data um, and those changes have been written straight to the ECU so we're ready to go with a crude method and see how that um, goes in the car. <coughs> One other uh, piece of functionality here in the software that's really good is this calculation trace option. So the Adaptronic ECUs are full of really innovative and good ideas uh, to help diagnose and uh, troubleshoot the ECUs and some of these features have made their way into uh, the new Haltech software. So this is one of the original features 
in the Adaptronic software. Uh, latest ECUs also had an oscilloscope function, which allowed you to see crank triggers and all of that within the software. And all that makes sense because the hardware to read all and decode all of those signals are, of course, built into the ECU. Uh, all it needed was the comms protocol from the ECU to the, to the PC and the software to display it. And uh, Andy was able to do that and bring that to the tuning world, which makes a world of difference, uh, troubleshooting and uh, being able to do everything from within the ECU. So we've got uh, basically a diagram of how the fuel calculation is done and the inputs through different um, parameters. So you've got master trim, coolant temperature, map, air temp, etc., and all of that feed through the calculation model into the eventual uh, final trim output over here. And if we look at the fuel value, we can also see all the inputs uh, that lead into the final output for the injector. So things like cranking, is it in cranking mode, and delivering fuel back from the cranking table as opposed to the main fuel table, uh, what sort of adjustments are used, what's the strategy used for fueling, is it alpha N, map, are we in backup mode and so forth. So all really good uh, visual way to diagnose the ECU if you are having issues, hopefully we won't have to use this, but once we get it up and running, it may pop into here and have a look for interest sake. Alrighty, job done, let's get it in and see how it goes.